Take a moment and bless, bless his holy name. Woo! Jesus. Mm -mm, I gotta push that back. Come on, y'all. Anybody out there got a praise today? Anybody wanna tell him thank you? I know I do. I'm telling y'all. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Mm. I don't know what it was. I think I hit the doorway of my house today, and um, had not been home in a couple of weeks. Had not been home in a couple of weeks. And it just felt good to be home, to be home, to walk in an atmosphere that I have consistently and uh, repetitively prepared for the presence of the Lord. And it just felt good to walk back in my house and just be here to bring you at three with me where it all started. And I think that um, the weekend just did something to me. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity to see a gift that somebody sent me. I was overwhelmed at that. It is a dreamer's blanket that says I'm busy. That, her name is, I just want to give God praise for this. Karen Quanless. Karen Quanless sent me this beautiful card and this furry blanket, and I want you to know, Karen, that I'm going to take it downstairs in my favorite chair that I have when I'm in my lounge room down there in my family room and cover up with it. And the other side of it has writing on it, and the writing says that, thank you, Dr. Bynum, because you decided to fly, we have found our wings. And um, that touched me in such a deep way. And just thank you. I'm just grateful to the Lord for all that he is doing for us and in us and through us. And um, I want to get all of this out of the way because I know I won't be able to at the end because I feel full right now. I don't know, y'all. I just feel like just shouting backwards or something. But I'm going to be in Fort Lauderdale Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This coming Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the Jesus Experience. That's November the 10th through the 12th at the Dillard High School, 2501 Northwest 111th Street in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If you want to know more information about it, go to JesusExperience at gmail.com. That's JesusExperience at gmail.com. And of course, if you have not gotten your book, Praying from the Third Dimension, we are now home, so we are shipping out this week. And please don't send us to the post office with stragglers. So this would be a good week and a good day for you to order your book and we're back home and we're going to be busy between now and Thursday because they all have to go out by Thursday. So we are expecting God to uh, help us on that. And so if you have not gotten your book, we're going through this book, Praying from the Third, from the third Dimension. And um, of course, I wanted to let you know that the last count that I got for this special edition fe uh, feature um, the last count I got was 327, and we were only going to do 500 of the signature series. You can get your topical Bible 
when they come out next time after the 500, it will not have my picture on it and it will not be signed in gold. And I'm also signing, physically signing the inside with your name. So I'm going to be sitting downstairs in my family room signing to Trina, to Gail, and signing yours. So this would be the, what, what we call the signature series. And we have already taken in and sold 327. So we're only going to do 500 because they're going to be signed and numbered. And, they, and once they're signed and numbered, the value of it will go up. And the next ones that come out will not be like this. They will be this color and some of the decorations, but not with my picture and they will not be signed. So we don't want you to miss that opportunity. And so there's so far they told me there was 327 purchased, which means we only have a hundred and something left. So don't forget to get your topical Bible for $99. And also just for a $20 seed, you get your bring back, uh, praying from the third dimension and I got bring back the glory on my mind because uh, November the 30th through December the 2nd right here in New York City we're going to be doing bring back the glory now the movement and so the movement is going to be launched right from the new greater Bethel ed edifice and my pastor is overjoyed he's flipping backwards he he's stammering at the tongue and and he's saying I know that um, this must be the Lord because you just don't do anything just because and just because it's your church I said no God said now that we're getting ready to do the movement the movement has to move from my home church and the whole team Bishop Carolyn Showell, Dr. Nesbitt, uh, Pastor, uh, Prophet Baez, uh, Baez um, uh, Bishop Husband and joining us is Apostle Carrier who could not preach because she was helping me host in Lake Charles, Louisiana and I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome, awesome. So if you missed it when we were in Lake Charles, the same team, I'm going to travel with my same team. So when you hear that Bring Back the Glory is coming to a city near you, know that you are in store for an encounter with the glory of God. And so that is November the 30th through December the 2nd. So what you're going to see when I go off today, I'm going to be posting several flyers, but November the 30th through December the 2nd. And uh, it's going to be awesome. And you, I, I want you to plan to be there. Wow. Whew. I love y'all. I love y'all. So let me just start here. Let me start here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I just want to say that my experience, oh, and she bought me this little bumblebee pad. It's like a little, um, you can't really see it good, but I'm going to do something that people probably going to think I'm crazy, but it's okay. You see that? It's a little bumblebee. The cutest thing ever. The cutest thing ever. Little gold bumblebee. I think I'm going to stamp this inside of y'all Bibles. I'm going to do that. Everybody's going to get a gold bumblebee stamp right inside of their topical Bible. Oh, this is, no, this is adorable. I, you see it really close. See that little gold bumblebee? That is amazing. I just put it on my cheek. They call us crazy anyway, so, you know. <laughs> what can I say? What, what can I say? <laughs> Y'all know me. Y'all know me. Oh, Jesus. I love this sport. I love it when they come for us like that. It just fuels me. That's how I get my gas. You know, some people say, well, I get my gas, but I just praise the Lord. I, uh -uh, I, get, I get my gas when somebody comes against the will of the Lord in my life. And I get my gas when somebody comes against the fact that uh, we are grown people and 57 years old and and 30 years old, and 18 years old, and 19 years old, and we have a mind that we can do whatever we want to do that the Lord allow us to do. And so the Bible said that Jesus spoke in parables so that those that were not of him could not understand him. Mm -hmm. And so people may not be of us, and so they can't understand us. And uh, I'd like to just read a little definition here and the definition is for those that, that, that do not uh, understand the way, some of the methods that I teach. And um, you may not like my methods, but you can't deny my results. And so we'll, we'll hang that on the hanger right there. Um, 
it says that a metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. It says it is a thing regarded as representative or symbolic of something else, especially something that is abstract. So when we speak about certain things on this broadcast and um, on at three with me, we speak many times metaphorically. And so if you don't follow the story, you won't know what the metaphor mean. And then you'll run off on a tangent thinking that somebody is talking about something left when we are talking about what goes on in our house. You know, that three with me is like, like a family. This, this is what goes on in our house. And so, you know, my mother used to say all the time, you know, she'll tell us to do something. She said, go do so and so and so before I knock your head down the street. Do she literally mean that? Um, absolutely not. But that's a metaphor that says it's going to hurt real bad when I do it. And you're going to think your head is down the street. So when you live in a house and you are present in the house uh, seven days a week and you are a part of a um, colony, a colony, and you are part of the body of Christ, the, 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 the true body of Christ, the, the, the church without walls, uh, the church without rules but relationships then we must learn the language of spirituality and the language of um, the metaphoric type of language so that we would understand that we have to be careful in the way that we teach, that we don't use religious terminologies when we're trying to take you to relationship. I just said something right there. I just said something right there because truly I can do that. I can, I, I, I can speak um, from a religious perspective and, and, and sometimes you hear things so much being said a certain way until it doesn't impact your life anymore. It, it, it sounds like old manna. It, it, it sounds like stale bread. And so the generation that I am talking to on this page is the generation that is sick and tired of foolery and dumbness. And so I have to teach the following that I have. You stay over there and teach the following that you have with 1.4 view, visit, uh, viewers. I have to teach the people that sit over here that's 100,000 plus on videos because I'm teaching another generation. I'm, I'm teaching that generation that the Bible said there arose a generation that did not know the Lord. And so my responsibility is to teach you God and not religion. And so in doing that, Sometimes you have to associate how you teach with something that they can identify with. You know, everybody can't identify with visualizing a man being in the lion's den. Because everybody we know that came near a lion in this hour got yourself ate up. So, you know, we can't identify with some of that sometimes. We can't identify with um, the Hebrew boys walking in a fiery furnace. You know what I'm saying? And, and their clothes weren't consumed. But, but we can certainly look at the likes of Juanita Bynum and, and say that I know some people that have walked through a fiery furnace and their clothes were not consumed. And when I looked into their life situation, I saw the fourth one standing in there. And uh, because of that, you know, the, the, he took the heat out of the flame and we were all able to survive it. So now I have an identification with the Hebrew boys. Their fire was literal, but so was mine. But so was mine. And so we're in that day now. That that's how we have to teach. And so we don't go off defending. Somebody said, well, you know, well, how do I do that? Um, the only way, let me just say this to us. And, 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 and so, you know, I'm, I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you what I have learned. I'm not teaching you what's coming off the top of my head. I'm teaching you what the Lord has taught me. And that is the best way to defend um, uh when the enemy, because it's not people, because what the enemy really wants is to bring you from the status of the spirit realm and bring you into the natural where your feet are now on the ground. That's why I posted what I posted this morning before my plane took off. I was sitting there 
And um, the Lord just brought that to me. And he said, do you know the reason why people throw rocks? And I said, well, Lord, you know why? He said, because their feet is close to the ground, and that's the closest weapon they have. And so, you know, you don't have nothing but a rock to throw because that's where your feet are. And I, and I said, well, yeah, that's true. And he said, but have you ever seen anybody throw a rock and it hits somebody that's standing in the third dimension? And I said, no, God. And he said, well, then that's, that's where it is. That's why you don't feel a lot of the stuff that people do to you and a lot of stuff that people say to you because you're not standing at ground zero. You're not standing at ground zero. And so um, anybody that know anything about uh, September 11th, when, 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 when ground zero hit, it was just a, it, it was no longer constructed buildings. It was a lot of rocks all over the ground. And, and so when you see people throwing rocks like that, they don't have nothing else to do with that time. They don't, they, they, they and, and, and the people that they're saying it to, those are very unhappy people and unproductive people that just feel like, you know, that's entertainment for them. And so then what you going to do, just bring your feet all the way down and just be at ground zero too. And then you start picking up a rock too. That's a lot of bloodshed, but nothing productive. And so, you know, I'm not out into uh, killing people. You know, the Bible uh, lets us know that we're not to do that. And so uh, the people in the, in, in, in the churches who kill, they wounded. And so when people throw rocks, you already wounded. So why would I turn around and kill you? Because I know if I throw a rock at you, you're going to die. So I just, you know, I just don't. That's why I don't, I don't call names on this page and unless I'm addressing something and the Lord tells me to. But um, when it comes down to people consistently picking at me, I don't call their name because, you know, that's what they want. And, and, and when you, as you begin to grow on this page and God begin to take you up and you begin to gain some sort of notoriety, you have to understand that the Bible said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. In other words, if you come with me, then what comes out of my mouth as it pertains to the Lord, it will, it will get greater and it will get bigger, which means we possess within us the power of magnification. If we touch it, it magnifies. If we leave it alone, it dies until the next story comes up. And I want you to remember that, that the power of magnification is in you. And as long as I don't touch nothing that they're talking about, it just would die. Because when I touch it, I make it bigger. When I touch it, I make the numbers bigger. When I touch it, it make people go over there and see their videos more. When I touch, That's why they have to use my name every other week. Because it just it draws that kind of attention. So I know that. So now I don't. I don't contend with that. That's just way too low for me. I'm sorry. And so, for those of you that weren't on the page and didn't understand the metaphor of the Old Bay seasoning, it was a story that I told about a waiter that kept coming back to me in California, and I told him that I wanted Old Bay seasoning, and he kept coming back saying, but you don't want it in garlic? And No, I don't want the garlic. Then he would go back in the kitchen and come back and say, you don't want me to add some butter to it? And No, I don't want you to. Well, you don't want us to add this kind of season? No, I don't. And I, and I turned around and I said, if you would just obey me and go back there and get me my old bay, and all the waiters just busted out laughing, and it was, it was a laughing moment. And so God had me to say to people on this page, if you would just obey him and just do what he said, and just go back there and fix it the way I said fix it, then we would be all right and everything would be all right. And so if you don't know the whole story, you would take that and run off with it. And I said, the Lord said, if we put that in our presence, in our purse, somewhere we could see it, then every time God tells us to do something, we are reminded that you're not going to be satisfied. The meal is not going to taste the way you want it to taste. Your life is not going to be the way you want your life to be unless you obey God, unless you do it God's way. I was sharing with um, one, of my, one of my children on this page, little Jasmine, Jasmine uh, Taylor. Um, and I was saying with her, you know, she had inboxed me and I, and I was telling her about my experience this weekend and how 
uh, the yesterday, you know, I went by to see my mom, and 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 when I got to my mom's house, and you know, visiting with her and, and my sister, and um, I got ready to walk out the house like I always do, you know, hey, 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 you know, sit with my mom for a while, hug her and hold her, and and uh, talk to my sisters, and we talk about family stuff, and my cousins was there, and we were just having a great time, and I got ready to leave out the door, and I was like, all right then, and the Lord said, pray, and I said, well, you know, you know, okay, well. I'm just going to be praying for mama. He said, no, pray right now. And I don't, as soon as I thought about, I don't want that old bay seasoning came to my mind. I was like, okay, God, okay, God, okay, God. You say, I'm, I'm being obedient. And I just started praying and the glory of God fell in the house and the presence of the Lord was, was there. And many of you know that my dad has been gone for some time. But at that moment, I used to go to my parents' house and I would feel such a burden like I couldn't hardly stand to be there because my father was gone. Do you not know that yesterday was the first day that I was able to walk in there in eight years and I felt the presence of the Lord and I felt like I want to come back and spend a week and spend the night. I wasn't able to, to spend not even a couple of hours in the house without feeling like I'm about to break down and, and you know, daddy is gone. And none of that. I felt while I was there yesterday. And when I prayed, something broke and, 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 and I, I felt reconnected to the house and not in sorrow. And I, that's what I'm telling you. That's why we cannot put our attention on what other people don't understand. Um, and then I left there and, and, and I went to visit my Aunt Bernice who, who lives south where my mom lives and she had just had surgery and, and I wanted to stop by there to see her. And I got there and we would, had such a great fellowship with, with my Uncle Howard and her. And we would just sit in that fellowship. And when we got ready to go, the Lord said, pray. And I said, um, well, I'll be, I hugged her and I said, ain't burning this shit. I'm, I pray for people that's sick. You're going to be all right. And we all laughed. So we all left and went out and got in the car. And when we got in the car, I was sitting there. And just as the car got ready to pull off, it felt like my kidney was exploding. Like I got to go to the restroom right now. I jumped out of the car, ran back in the house. And when I got through using the restroom, the Lord said, no, that was me. I said, pray. I brought you back in this house for you to be obedient. And then once again, the old bay seasoning came up to my mind. You're not going to be satisfied. Your spirit is not going to have a spirit of satisfaction and peace unless you obey God. And so I got through praying for her and I just felt a release. I just felt something break. And then I was speaking to Jasmine and Jasmine was like, I've been praying and praying and praying for God to do something miraculous in my family, prophetess Bynum. She said, and I, I, I obeyed you. I don't care how much it may have sound crazy to somebody. And I put that old base season in, in my purse. She said, and I began to pray for my family for seven days. And she was saying how she lost her uncle, but at the uncle's home going, 15 family members gave their life to Christ. 15 family members. She had been just praying for God to do something for one of them. And the Lord did it for 15 people, which means he will do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And, and, and that power that worketh in us, everybody, is called the power of obedience. It's called the power of obedience. And I was looking today because my, 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 my spirit was just, it was still on Friday night. And when I was ministering on Friday night and the Lord just began to speak to me before I, I, I got there, somebody um, at the book signing, I, I can't even begin to tell you what I feel today. I mean, this, this, this something, this, this refreshing that I feel is because that book signing, I met many people from this page and the testimonies, I eventually just told one of my secretaries, give me a box of tissue and just put it right here because I couldn't stop crying. It's like one person after the next, one person after the next. People walked up to me and said, I have not been in a church since I was a teenager. And she said, I lost my daughter. And 
five years ago. She said, and I hated God. And I, she said, I was raised in the church. She said, but everything in me that my mother taught me, that my grandmother taught me, it was dead. It was gone. She said, I was just in the world, just lost, prophetess Bynum. She said, and when my daughter died, I hated God. She said, and I stumbled up on this page a couple of months ago. She said, and when I tell you, and she stopped, and when she looked off, we both was, was, was getting ready to let it go. And the tears start rolling. She said, last night when I came to hear you preach was the first time I had been inside of a church since I was a teenager. She said, and I have felt from this page, God literally yanking stuff up out of me. She said, and now I got that connection back that I used to have when I knew the Lord as a teenager. It all came back and I could feel myself again. When you hear stuff like that, People walking up to the table saying, I had given up. I was, I was done. People saying, I didn't, I, I, I was lost. The little girl on the video, oh my God, when the, when the video went off, we had a crying moment. She said, I was lost. I was completely lost. And I stumbled up on this page. And she said, and that three with me have walked me back to God. She said, I'm living for the Lord. I put it all down. I've Another lady come to the table and said, I was just, just addicted to weed. She said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I have a professional job. I have a corner office, but I could not break the habit. She said, one day you were ministering on at three with me and God broke that thing off of me and I have not touched it since. He delivered me from it. Listen, this is what I'm telling you. With what God is doing on this page, I can't afford to be sidetracked. With dumb stuff. I can't afford to be sidetracked with carnal thinking people because I know what God is doing for the lives of people on this page. I get people coming on this page, coming to the tape table saying, I was getting ready to kill myself and I stumbled. And everybody kept saying, I stumbled up on the page. I hardly ever came across anybody that said, you know, maybe a few of them, I've been following you for some years. One lady that had been following me for years said, I was gone. I was dead inside. She said, and at three with me, it's like a fibrillator. She said, we turn it to 150. She said, and it'll give you, nothing happened. You turn it to 250. She said, but when you get to 300, the number three on that fibrillator, it jump starts the heart. She said, and I want you to know you jump started my heart for God. And that lady began to boo hoo cry and speak in tongues. I mean, People kept going off in tongues and we kept having moments right there in that lady's clothing store. It was unbelievable. The testimonies. And that's when God said to me, it's time for us to testify. It's time for many of you that are on this page to do your own live video and go up on Facebook and talk about what God has done for your life. Because I'm telling you all, it's people that are out there that don't think they got no hope. I mean, they were getting on their knees crying and all I could do was just weep because I know it's not me. I know this is not the work of a man, but this is the work of the Lord. This is God himself. And I'm just a vessel that's sitting here. And that's why I can't afford to get entangled with this thing personally, where we're take, taking personal offense at what somebody would have to say about me negative, what they would have to say about my hair, or she don't get her hair done, or she don't do this. I don't, I can't take this personal because this is not personal. This is business and this is kingdom business. And this really has nothing to do with me. It has very little to do with me, but all to do with the people that God would draw to this page. And that's what I have to keep my focus on. You know, every now and then, something came and I was like, oh, you know what, I will, and God has said, this is not personal. This is not about you. This is not your battle. You don't have one. I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not in a battle. I'm not in warfare. I'm not struggling with my life or what I want to do for God or whether or not, you know, I want to go all the way with God. So this is not my battle. And sometimes we take up on ourselves a warfare that is not ours. And that's why I posted that post that said, the only person I will take a command from is God. He is my commander in chief. And I'm sitting here because he's not only allowing me 
to nurture his children back to life, but he's calling me to raise up an army and we come in and we come in whether people want us to or not. We may not look like the church people. We may not sound like them. Our vernacular may be a little secular and maybe a little slang. I mean, but we come in because we have a heart after God and our heart is being purified for God and we're desiring the Lord. And we may not do it all right. And, and you know, when I, when I was in Bring Back the Glory, uh, Bishop Showell said something to me and we had to laugh. She said, these is a different kind of people. And, and I said, why do you say that? She said, because they don't shout like traditional church people. And when we're preaching, they run all the way up to the table, to the podium, and just flop themselves on the floor, just weeping. And she said, this is a different kind of people. I said, because they don't know that. They don't know the traditional whatever, whatever. All they know is that the hand of the Lord picked me up and he rescued me. All they know is that when I was in a rough spot, it wasn't nobody but God. All they know is that when they had the gun to their head or they were getting ready to commit suicide or they had given up on God in life, that God used this page to turn their lives around. And by them being that grateful, they don't care what they look like. Some of them, when the when when everybody started praising God, I mean, they just went. One man was out there doing like this, but he was just in tears. But you know, it wasn't traditional, but it was his dance. Another lady was out there, and she was just going. It wasn't traditional, but it was her dance, and that's what we're out to do: bring people to the Lord in their own individuality, and allow their personality to give praise to God, and teach them how to live. And incorporate the spirit of God in their everyday life. Not to, not to alter their personality, but to refine it so that you're you, but you are better you. How about that? Somebody put some hearts up on that screen. I know, I know God just said something right there. You are better you. And that's what we're after. We're after being a better us. And so in the midst of that, I had to go back to this. Friday night, that message the help, the help, because we are doing this, 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 this book on praying from the third dimension. And I'm telling y'all, God, God is reading a book, but he's, he's almost rewriting this book from a deeper perspective and, 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 and everything that he is incorporating in, um, our language on this page, it's becoming, um, so revelatory, so, so, um, beyond. It's like he's, he, it's like he's teaching us from that realm instead of teaching us from here and we're going there. It's like we're experiencing the reverse. It's like he's taking the teach there and he's teaching it from heaven down. That's what I feel like. Like he's teaching it from that dimension. And, and, and I said, okay. He said, because what they need to understand next, Juanita, is that I am, I am their help. But you got to explain to them what I mean when I say that. The, 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 the scripture that, um, that he used, and I want to, I want to, uh, bring this to your, uh, attention. It was Psalms 120. And Psalms 120 said, it said, I would lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh? From whence cometh? From where cometh? And, and cometh, cometh. C-O-M-E-T-H means a continuation to. He's not going to help you. He's going to continue to help you. Oh my God, did you get that? Oh my God. Oh my God. He's not just helping you in one situation. You may see a manifestation of the help in one situation, but by the same token and at the same time, simultaneously, you are being helped in every area that you have a need. Oh my God. When, when you see the Lord helping you, in one thing, know this today, that you are being helped in all things and the help cometh. It continues to come. It will not stop coming. He said, I am a very present help 
in the time of trouble, in the time of trouble. So that means if God knows up the road and around the corner, what is going to come up? He already knows what kind of trouble you may encounter. The help is already there waiting for you because the help cometh. Once you identify it as it being a part of your life and it's being interwoven in my life. And the one, once I settle that in my spirit, that no matter what, the Lord is my help. Then it is forever settled in me that the Lord is continuing to help me and he will always help me. My God, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Watch this. It said that he was talking to me and he said, you have to understand that the help of the Lord is a foreknowing spirit. Listen to this, y'all. Listen to this, because you got to, you got to, you got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. Because I had to go go over this. Because a lady, a lady inboxed me and said, "Could you talk about that?" Because you were preaching it on that on that tape, but we really couldn't get all of it and really couldn't hear all, uh, everything. And 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 I at first I said, "Well, no, I'm not going to do." It. And the Lord said, "No, you have to," because that was that was too profound. That was too prophetic. He said, "The." The word help, the word help, the word help. You got to look at the word help. And he said, if you look at the word help in the natural sense of the word, if you look at it in the natural sense of the word, you think, well, they coming to help me or somebody's coming to help me. What well, help me with this blanket. So once they help Listen at this. Once they help you, they help you. That then becomes their name. They are your help. But the word help, the word help can be can be transformed in two different tenses, in two different dimensions. It can be something and then it also can be what it does. And so when you look at the word help, its first nature, its first nature is of a verb tense, which means the help is moving. The help is not sitting still. My God, my God, my God, my God. It said help is to make it easier for someone to do something by offering one services, services. That's what the dictionary said. It didn't say to offer one service because if I offer you my service, if I offer you my service, then I can help you with this and not help you with that. If I offer you my service, then I can offer you the fact that I may know how to cook chicken, but I don't know how to make macaroni and cheese. But when I offer you my services, then that means there is many dimensions to me. What the Lord is offering us today is his services, which means there is a lot of dimensions to me. You haven't seen, you haven't seen all of my help. You haven't seen all that I can do. You have, it has not yet been revealed to you. The different facets that I operate in and all of the testicles that comes out of me, all, all, all of the tentacles, everything that I can do, everything that I operate in, everything that I say. He said, I'm saying everything at the same time. I'm doing everything at the same time. I'm operating in everything at the same time. I'm healing everything at the same time. I'm healing minds. I'm healing emotions. I'm healing a leg. I'm healing a foot. I'm healing a leg. Are you hearing me? I'm healing a hand. I'm healing eyes. I'm healing your future. I'm delivering you from your past. When I say that I am your help, I'm offering you my services, which means my help cometh and it keeps on coming. Somebody said it keeps on coming. Oh my God. Oh my God. And listen, listen. He said, he said, I offer you, I offer to you today. He talking to you today. He's talking to you today, man of God, woman of God. I hear that he's talking to you. I'm offering you. I'm not your cousin. I'm not your auntie. I'm not your mama or your daddy who anytime you look and depend upon the services and the help from anybody other than God. 
He said, you cannot depend on the arm of the flesh. Why? Because it is limited and it has an expiration date. You're not hearing what God is saying. I depended on my father as my help. I depended on him that every time I got ready to go out to a major platform to preach, I would have my father to pray for me and prophesy over me. I depended upon him, but he had an expiration date. He was not going to live forever. And so now what the Lord had to do, he had to change my dependency. And he had to help me to understand, like he's trying to help you to understand, that in him there is no limitation. Anything that you depend upon that is not God, then you're asking for limited help. And there's only so much that person can do for you. God, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? They can't do everything. So therefore, disappointment is the inevitable. Oh my God. You got people sitting on this page right now that, 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 that's still processing through disappointment. You're still processing through hurt because you had your dependency on somebody instead of the Lord. Because you depended on somebody to help you and they promised you that they would. And either they didn't or when they came, they didn't give you the help that they promised you that they would give you. But what did he tell us last week? That there's two things that I can't change. There's two things that are irreversible. And that is my vow and my promise. If I make you a promise and I say I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you completely. I'm going to offer you my services. You're going to see a manifestation of me constantly helping you. Who am I talking to right now? He said here, he said here, watch this. I'm I'm, I'm offering you one services or Listen, or resources. I'm not just giving you my services. I'm giving you my resources. That means I'm going to help you financially. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't think y'all want to hear that. I don't, somebody said, well, Dr. Brown, I don't think you understand because, you know, I told the people the other day, somebody said, well, you know what? Well, you don't know what, you know, I, I made a mistake and this had happened and that. And I was reading a post that came up on my page and it said, that um, in China, when they break a, a, a bowl or something, they don't just throw it away, but they repair the bowl. They put all the pieces back together with gold. They put the pieces back together with gold. And so the picture that they had was a bowl and it had all these cracks in it and these lines in it, but all the lines was now gold. In other words, the area that the bowl was broken in, because they put it back together with gold, the value of it is now increased and your brokenness done made you valuable. Are, are you hearing that? Oh, that, now that right there had some, yeah, put some hearts up there right there. Uh-huh. Every, every area that you were broken in, every area that you felt like, you know what, my life was broken. The Lord is saying to me to tell you today, I'm putting you back together with gold. Your value has gone up. Uh, you, you don't hear that. Your value has gone up because now I am your help. And I am your help. Watch this. Watch this. Because help has a foreknowing spirit. The word help in the spirit, in the spiritual sense, as it relates to God, is a foreknowing spirit. It knows already where it's going to need to help you at. It's already in your future. Somebody said, what I need right here, help right now. Right now is gone. Right now is gone. It's gone. Five minutes ago is gone. Uh, 20 minutes ago is gone. 15 minutes or 60 seconds ago is gone. So the help of the Lord is not backtracking. The help of the Lord is running ahead of you. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. God, I feel like running right there. Did you just hear that? The help of the Lord got to keep itself in front of you, not trailing behind you. Are you hearing that? Because the second is gone. The minute is gone. And the Lord is not helping the past. He's helping the future. And he can't afford to wait in your right now. Are, are, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you? Why, why must he remain present? He remain present as you step. Because as you step in what God has called you to do, your help is already in the step before you step down in it. Because the way you're able to stand in what God is saying is because the help got there to help you to stand. Oh, God, is somebody getting this? 
Is somebody getting this? That my help is already ahead of me. My help is waiting for me to step into it. Do somebody get that? Well, somebody said, well, I don't have nothing. And I, I, I don't, I, Dr. Bonham, you don't understand. I just don't have nothing. Well, hold on a minute because you got to understand something. When God says, I'm your help, everything is of value to God. You must don't really understand God. Because I know he taught me this. This this wasn't no, oh, the Lord said this and woo, I just feel it. No, he taught me this. When I said to, I said to the Lord the same thing that you're saying. I said, I don't have nothing. It's like I done lost everything and I don't have nothing. And I was just weeping and crying. I don't have nothing. I don't. And one day the Lord said this to me. And this is getting ready to bless somebody's socks off. He said, I want you to understand something. He said, in the beginning, I stepped out on nothing and I made everything. He said, but I'm going to say that one more time. In the beginning, I stepped out on nothing and I made everything. I'm going to say it one more time. In the beginning, he stepped out on nothing and he made everything. He said, therefore, Juanita, nothing is something. Because I had to put something on nothing. And I made nothing so that nothing can support something. Are you hearing God today? My God, Jesus. I made nothing so nothing could be the support system of your something. I cannot give you something. Unless nothing is present as a foundation. Oh, are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because nothing is your foundation that God is going to put something on. And so when people start saying, I feel like I'm in a deep hole, you in a good place because he digging nothing. He got to take you all the way. He got to make that, make that nothing firm. He got to make that nothing firm. And that's why when you're building a building and they are digging the hole in the ground, the average person that don't know nothing about this page will ride by this page and say, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing but a big old hole out there. But the people that understand, da, 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 bo, sha, da, ya. thank you, Jesus. The people that understand what God is doing, the people that have heard a promise from God, the people that understand that God is working something out for me, the people that understand that I am in the divine plan of the Lord, those people are able to stand in front of the same ground and say, but I see something. Because this nothing is the beginning of my something. He had to dig me out before he can build something on me. He had to purge me out before he can put something on me. And guess what? If God is going to take you high, he got to dig you deep. And your nothing got to be a deep hole of nothing. Because your something is going to be so great. Oh God. Is somebody hearing that? Is somebody hearing that today? Oh, please tell me you hear that. Please tell me you hear that. He said, because the minute we start praising him for nothing, then that means, and that's an indication to God that I'm ready for my something. My God, I just said something right there. Jesus, I feel like giving God some praise right here. Oh, my God. Did you just hear that? He said, the minute I can find the people to start praising me for nothing, it is an indication that they are ready for their something. It is an indication that they trust me. It is an indication that they can see what I am doing in the spirit. And that's why the Bible said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. What am I doing? I'm taking my eyes beyond where I'm standing. Oh God, my God, I got to take my eyes beyond where I'm standing. I don't know where I'm going, but that's good. Well, I don't know. I don't know what. No, I got to go to the hills. I got to go to the hills because if I take my eyes there, how many of y'all remember that lesson? How many of y'all remember that lesson? Tap that screen if you remember that lesson. When I talked about the eyes, when he said I would look to the hills, I would look to the hills. He's not talking about gazing. He's not talking about vision. He's not just talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take my eyes and look across my living room. I'm going to take my eyes and look over on my dance floor. I'm going to take my eyes and look at this blanket. No, 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 no. This is not a gaze. It says when you, my study said, when I take my eyes and I set my eyes on something, then my presence is there. 
Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You, you know what? Let me just say something to you all. Because people think that I say this all the time. But you know how you be going through YouTube and you be looking for something and something pop up on the side. And it's had a, a clip popped up of Beyonce. And Beyonce was in concert. And she was she was going on on the stage. And she saw the camera. She said, I want y'all to put y'all camera phones down so you can get in the moment and get this experience. I said, my God. Because we thought people think that I just say that in church services because I don't want you to take. You got Beyonce standing up there saying, put your camera phones down so you can get in the moment and get this experience. Because when you set your eyes on me, you become present with where I am. So when he says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help, I am setting my eyes. I am gazing in the spirit because what I just did is I just traveled my whole life from where I am. And I just set my whole life over in another place. And I'm not just talking about another place. I'm talking about, I just set my whole life. I took my eyes and my eyes took my life with it. And it set me on the hill. And what happens when you get on the hill? I can look at everything down here and know it's going to be all right. I can see where the next piece is. Oh, y'all, come on here. If you in the valley, you can't really see that good. But when you get on top of the hill, you can see the cars coming. If somebody was bringing you a, a, a 18 wheeler truck that was full of the blessings of God. Once you get up on the hill, you can see the truck coming and people don't know why you praising God because they said, well, I know what her situation is and you just carrying on. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. And they said, well, you know what? I'm going to really be praying for her because it just seemed like, you know, she just going through something. No, because help says to improve a situation or a problem to be a benefit to he said, no, I am your benefit. It said to help means to assist someone to move in a specified direction. You didn't hear me say that. Did you just hear the, did you just hear that? It said, when you say that the Lord is my help, ah, yeah, then the Lord is trying to assist you to move in a specified direction. You hit in the wrong direction. So in order for me to get you in the right direction, I got to let you lift up your eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? Because if I lift up my eyes unto the hills, my help is coming. My eyes take my life and set it in the presence of my help. And I can see my help coming. And therefore, I now understand that I'm not impatient anymore. Because now they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Are you hearing? So why is my strength being renewed? Because I'm standing where my help is. Oh God, oh God, I'm right where my help is. Hey, Jesus, I'm not looking for my help. I'm in the presence of my help. My God, and as long as I stay on this hill, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. As long as I stay on this hill, as long as I don't let the devil move me from the hill, I can see my help. I can see. You can see your help. And I'm talking to somebody today. That's what your problem is. You're in the valley too long. You're in the valley of decision too long. But the Bible said that when the, when the prophet went to the valley and he saw the valley of dry bones, he said, Lord, can these bones live? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, can anything good come out of this? God, can they get up again? God, can you revive their life? Lord, can you resuscitate their ministry? And the Lord speaks to the prophet who has eyes to see in the spirit. And he said, prophesy to it. But what does that mean? Does that mean just speak some words? Does that mean just let some chatter come out of your mouth? No, that means, what does prophecy mean? What is a common definition that we can connect to prophecy? Prophecy means I say what I just saw. My God from Zion. My God. And how did I see it? Because I lifted up my eyes to the hills. 
The prophets have to live on the hills. You on this page today and you got a prophetic anointing in your life. But the devil trying to keep you in the valley with dumb stuff. You got to go and lift your eyes up unto the hills so your eyes can take your life to the hill so you can speak what you see. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You got to speak what you see. And that's what makes the prophecy come alive. The prophecy come alive because I'm not talking from my mind. I'm not talking from my intellect. I'm not talking from my own personal desire. I'm talking because my eyes have received help. My eyes have met the help. Are y'all hearing me? God have mercy. God, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Do y'all want me to quit? Because I can, I can, it's, 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 it's 402. You want me to quit? Because I just, I just, I just want to tell you this. Can I, can I have 10 minutes? Can I have 10 minutes? Oh God, oh God, oh God. It's a foreknowing spirit. It's a foreknowing spirit. Are you hearing me? It's a foreknowing spirit. And when I went to the conference, and the conference was called the help. I want you to hear this. I went to the conference, and the conference was called the help. But when they invited me a couple of months ago, nobody knew that me being from Chicago, that the Cubs, after a 108-year curse, that the curse would be broken the weekend that I came to preach. I want you to hear something. But this is what I want you to hear. I want you to understand that the help is foreknowing. And they booked the conference and the Cubs won. And the night that I preached, the parade was supposed to be today. And for whatever reason, they had to change everything and make the parade on Friday, the day that I preached. And the Holy Ghost said, it was prophetic that you be in town standing on those grounds where the curse is now broken. And I speak in this camera today that the curse is now broken. And every entanglement of the devil and every assignment of the enemy and everything that the devil have denied you of, it is loosed as I speak right now. Because when the curse is broken in the earth realm, are you hearing me? He said, my will be done, my kingdom got done on earth as it is in heaven. Which means something in the heavens have been loose on those that have been held up for years. Oh, I don't know if you're going to receive this or not. I don't know if you're going to receive this or not. Something in the heavens have been broken over those that's been struggling for years. I'm not talking about somebody I've been going through for the last month or so. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to somebody that said, Dr. Bynum, this has been years. This has been years of craziness. This has been years of torment. This has been years dealing with this, with my family, with my marriage, years of going through in my body. And the Holy Ghost would speak right now and say, it is broken. It is broken. The thing that had held you for years because the help is foreknowing. And the help knew that. And watch this. I want you to get something. I want you to see how the help came. I want you to see how the curse was broken. The Cubs have always suffered a warfare. For 108 years, they have been under the diabolical curse of the goat and the black cat. And every time it looks like they're getting ready to win a game or win a series, somebody would release a goat and the same warfare would come up again and they would lose. But I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Right in game seven, at the end of the series, oh Jesus, the other team hit a home run where it looked like the other side was going to win. And what happened? The Cubs came under an attack and they started making dumb moves like the spirit of that goat or the spirit of that curse was trying to creep back in and they start just messing up. And you know what happened? The Lord opened up heaven and caused it to rain and stop the game for 17 minutes. They said one of the teammates went back in the locker room and began to tell them who they are and remind them who they are while it was raining. 
But one thing about it, the number 17 is the number of victory and it is a number of Noah and it is a number of deliverance. And so guess what? When God saw that the enemy was about to trick them in the same way that he has always tricked them, heaven opened up and I hear the Lord saying, not this time. You're going to get this victory this time. You're going to get this breakthrough this time. You're going to get this thing lifted off of your family. The curse is going to be broken. Your family members are going to be saved. Your cousins that are on drugs and drug dealers and prostitutes and pole dancers. God said it is over. He said because now we are under the fact that heaven is going to open up. He said not another time will we come this close to the victory and not go all the way into the promise. Who am I talking to right now? Somebody need to put some hearts up because I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm beyond my time. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this today? Are you hearing this today? Who God. Oh, God. Take my eyes to the hills. Who Take my eyes to the hills. Take my eyes to the hills. Listen to me. God, if you take my eyes to the hills, my eyes will take my life there. Not another time. Not another time. He said, when I see that the devil is trying to intercept what I'm about to do, because I said it's over. I said it's over. He said, I opened up heaven. And I caused it to rain. I shut down the game and slowed down the process so they can get their breath. And I'm here to tell you right now, I don't know about y'all, but I claim it. I claim it. I claim it for you. I claim it for me. That we are champions. We are World Series winners. You a champion. You coming through this thing. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Not this time. Not this time. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. And my eyes will take my life there. And I will see and behold all that God is doing. That's why he said to Abraham, look out as far as your eyes can see. That wasn't no gaze. That was a shift. That was a movement. Can't nobody see that far. I don't hear what y'all saying. Can't nobody see that the children that they would have, that would be of the numbers of the sands in the earth. You can't see that in the natural. You can't see all the way down to 2016 that you would have a Jewish community and that Jesus would come and die and we would be adopted into the royal family. And we would be some of your children And Abraham would be our forefather You can't see that far 